good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Salamu alaikum, uh, bonjour, bonsoir, all these greetings to all of you. And uh, wishing all of you a prosperous, healthy, safe, a stable, sustainable life, inshallah. And first of all, we thank our uh, colleague Aya for making the media production. And as I was talking to you earlier a minute or two ago about what is this creature that you can see on the image that I draw for you. Before we start, today is the 9th of July. 9th of, the, of July commemorate the massacre or the genocide of the innocent Bosnian people in a city called Srebrenica. That's why we call it Srebrenica, the genocide. There's another organization called Remembering Srebrenica. And we witnessed the time of slaughtering and massacring those innocent young men. First of all, separating them from their families at that time. Then the United Nations security forces left the city to those criminals or to those terrorist leaders in the group at that time. And uh, feeling that they will be very kind and caring people with those uh, innocent civilians. Within three days, more than in too many, too many figures have been mentioned. Some figures said 14,000 people. Some figures said 11,000 people. Some figures said now up to 9,000 people. Even up till yesterday, when we were actually in, in a Zoom meeting with Remembering Srebrenica uh, organization, they were mentioning that their authority uh, discovered uh, 19 new remains of the massacres of Srebrenica, which happened in between 9th and 11th of July, 1995. This flower, which is I am wearing today, you can see it. You can see it if you can zoom it. I can see it. It it reflects. It it was, يعني, created by the mothers of the children and the men or the wives of the people who died, the, 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 the children or the men or the wives of the people who died during this massacre. The white color represent peace. The people of Bosnia want peace. And the green light, uh, the green uh, color in the middle, the, wi the white uh, color uh, at the periphery represents peace. The green color in the middle represents love. So they want love and peace. They want to live with the neighbors. And today, tomorrow, and uh, Sunday is the 9, 10, 11 of July to remember the massacre of the genocide of Srebrenica, the 26th anniversary. The people who are less than 30 might not realize the enormity of such a problem, but it happened in the middle of Europe under the eyes and the ears and nose of great countries and uh, to blame the Dutch UN peacekeeping forces who left the city to the Chetnik and those uh, terrorist leaders who later on tried in The Hague. Uh, but trying them 20 years later on does not bring the life of those people back. Uh, so please remember it. Join any uh, movement to prevent it happening to any race. When we remember it, we remember what's happening by uh, to, to the Uyghur in China, to the Kashmiri in India, to the Rohingya in Myanmar on the outside, and to other many, many people are massacred, unfortunately, and to the people in uh, Mozambique as well, 
to the people in uh, DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, and other countries, and other nations, unfortunately. Come back to our today's talk. Today's talk is about uh, people who do not love their countries. That's why I did not write the names. I have to ignore them, to disrespect them. Who are they? Who are they? And this is what we're going to see in a minute now. I, I uh, uh, thank my colleague who gave me the idea more than three months ago, I keep mentioning them, uh, which are there in front of you. Dr. Bashir, Lutfi Sayyid, Ahmed Haid. We need to pray for Ahmed Haid because we discovered that he has a tumor at his spinal cord and he is being operated on in Turkey, in Istanbul, Hala Fuad, Ahmed Sheikh, and Mustafa Mahad. This piece or this post I wrote on 28th of June, 2013. I wrote it in Arabic and English. That's why I delivered the Arabic talk last Tuesday about who are those people who do not love their homeland. Man nas I'm going to uh, talk in details about it. That's why I'm, I'm going to go through these three slides very quickly. And for the people who are watching on the Facebook, the link of the Zoom is there with the title of the talk. If you want to see the presentation, it is there, the link for the Zoom. This, this is what I wrote. Uh, uh, eight years ago, on 28-6-2013. But I revisited it again. I revisited it again. To make it a structured talk, not just a statement. Sometimes people could get excited and write a statement. But this statement has to be structured and change it to a talk or a syllabus. I started when I reviewed this statement by making the definition of the homeland. What is the homeland? Each individual, each one of you have the right, have the right, have the right to create his or her own definitions. If they have the knowledge, the experience, the passion, and the compassion to their homelands. You have the right. You can learn from others, there's no problem. But I'm encouraging you to make your own definition based on your culture, your values, your morality as well. And all this definition is my definition or are my definition. Tarif al-Watan Hoa is a security and safety. You feel secure and safe when you go home. When you go to Saudi Arabia, to Yemen, to Egypt, to UK, to Holland, to all these countries, because you're home, sweet home. Certainty and surrender. When you go home, you are certain that you are in your place. And you surrender all your life to your country, to your a homeland. It's an honor for you, for myself. And you feel harmony, you live in harmony with every individual citizen in the country. It's merit for you, it's merit, elevation, and passion, very passionate about your own country and my own country. And this is what the Prophet was talking about it when they left Mecca. Soul and Sanam, Ruh, soul in your blood, and the height, the upwarding. Nothing higher than the uh, homeland. Determination and entity. It is your entity. And you live forever. You, it, no, no. Uh, it is your character. It's your, it's your uh, identity. So, tranquility and contentment. You, you feel tranquil, yani in peace. You feel safe. You feel content. It's desire. Tenderness, love, uh, peace, 
and stability. It's also the present yet the absent lover, Al Habib Al Hadr Al Ghaib. It's a bedroom, dormancy, and dwelling. It is where we live and feel comfortable. It's a doctor, the spirit, and the medicine. It is tendency, the love, and the fondness. Al Ishq, Wal Hub, Wal Hawa. It's longing and winning and solitude. It's courtesy, supplement, and the instant of retreating. It is there. All these definitions will come to each and every one of you when we passionately talk about our homeland. It is generosity, karam, kindness, and knowledge. Karam wal ma'rifa wal rahma. It's prestige. Power, power, and architecture. It was the handset of the It's the warranty of working forward. Of working forward, the man. It is a warranty for of working forward with the universe. You can't walk forward with the universe alone. The whole the homeland and the people with you should walk with you. It is the remembrance and thought. الذكر والفكر the say and the do القول والفعل the heart and the pulse القلب والنب the biography and history السيرة والتاريخ the life and death الحياة والموت the birth and the eternity الميلاد والخلود heaven and the transcendence, transcendence. Sama was to move. Hardship and highness. Al Muana was Rifa. Vigor and summit Al Kimma was Jihad. Justice and exaltation. The loving tone, the Hua Al Sot Al Gamil and the singing carols. Wa Al Carols, the Homa, the Homa Chorus. يغنوا معك ده الوطن نحن نتكلم عنه ولا لا and this is what I ask each and every one of us as young people to be able to express their views about what they love so they can write it down so they can write it down so they can write it down the second point we discuss today what are the components what's the structure of our homeland what's made out of our homeland made out of what Number one, it is the people. The most important component of any homeland are the citizens, are the people, are the public. Without them, there is no homeland. Criterion component, all the creatures created by Allah to serve me and you. Without them, we cannot live in our homeland. That's why Allah created all those creatures, animals, birds, Trees, uh, water, mountains, all those. Topographical components, Tadaris, mountains, valleys, lakes, rivers, oceans, desert, all this being created for you to create the culture and the value which come from such a background. Climate, seasonal climate, which produce different fruits different crops and invite different animals and birds and insects live there societal components like our tribal ethnic racial clans and family component tribes too many different tribes if you go to a country like yemen a country like iraq a country like libya from different tribes different clans different sects Different families are there. The management component, which create the government structure and the state structure through organizations. It is also a cultural value-based religious and philosophical component. We have to have our value, our culture, our faith, our philosophy as a component inside, inside, inside our homeland. 
it's historical component, tariq, which firmly rooting the relationship between us and the values of the homeland. We're very proud to feel that we have got a history goes up to 5,000 years, 4,000 years, 6,000 years, 7,000 years, where, where, where the Renaissance or the awakening, where the civilizations and great leadership. It's aspirational, forward looking, it's forward looking. You keep looking forward to plan for the future and for future generations to come. It's divine component. We have to rely on a God. I'm not going to discuss who is the God. Divine component assuring everyone that there is a Lord who can protect their homeland as well. You do your own work, homework, but the Lord will, will be the overriding power to protect the homeland. These are the uh, 10 components making our uh, homeland. And you young people, that's my message to you, you can make them five, you can make them 20. It's entirely up to you. I was asked this question, why those people don't like their homeland? Why those people don't love their homelands? You see, I put 11 character here in front of you. Who are the people who don't love their homelands? Or those are the people who don't love their homelands. Number one, ignorant political leaders that see no other vision except their own. Those don't like their homeland, don't love their homeland, okay? Yani, when you have a political leader who is ignorant of what the community, what the country needs, he will be among the people who do not love their homelands. That's number one. Number two is religious leaders who hide behind their veils. Yani, when there's a problem happening, those religious leaders will be disappearing. Don't want to make any opinions. Number three of the people who don't like their homelands, young people who think that their homeland is like a football match. Yes, everything would be easy. Within a day or two or a month or two or a year or two, everything would be over. Uh, social change will take years and decades. Revolutionary young people who think that the homeland is like a football match. The loyalists who are extremists in their love, they love their, 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 their leaders to the state of worship. And when they hate their enemies to the state of making them devil, nothing in between. Those kind of loyalists or keep loving the leaders to the status of making him or her like a god or a prophet and hating actually their uh, uh, their uh, opponent and making them different. And you see this clearly in many countries after the Arab Spring. And the ignorant political leaders, the religious leaders, and the revolutionary young people, we saw all this during the Arab Spring. Facebook users, some young people who use the Facebook, and you see, this is a telephone, if you can see me now, okay? They think that the whole world is inside this screen, or the homeland is inside this. No, it's not there. It's not there. It's not a Facebook page. Your homeland is not a Facebook page. Okay, those political parties are very weak, extremely weak, even still, still born and yani born dead, still fighting, still fighting one another. And you saw them during 2011, 2012, 2013, have no ground, no public support, but they have a status called political party. Those people do not like their homeland. The media shows, you know what the media? Every in presenter, professional presenter called himself or herself presenter, presenter, they want to increase the number of viewers. So they create conflict. 
and they bring a lot of fuel to create conflict between societies and communities and the individuals. Media show that fuel the fire of hatred for the little reward offered to them by their masters. You know why? Because most now most of the TV or the media channels are owned by foreign companies or foreign countries. No loyalty to the homeland itself. And those TV presenters are implementing the policy of the donor or the director or the one who is employing or the empl employer himself or herself. Activists or experts or analysts, those analysts or experts who think that they know it all and they don't want to talk to anybody else. No, there's, you are an expert, yeah, we respect you, but there's another expert, a third expert in the same subject, a fourth and the fifth and sixth and seventh and tenth. You have to sit down together and tell us how can you deal with the water problem, with the agriculture problem, with unemployment problem, with climate problem, and all these problems. It needs many heads, not only one head. Uh, Hezbo Kanaba, the followers of the Sofa party, who sit and do nothing and think, and this, unfortunately these are the majority in most of the countries, especially in Middle East, North Africa, and some of the Muslim countries. The majority could go up to 80 or 90 percent, unfortunately. The last and not least, those who fund the thugs, whether from the local businessmen, from the local individuals, from the local groups, or from foreign businessmen, foreign countries, foreign institutions who are trying to make a conflict inside your homeland. And this happened, and we saw it clearly in 2011, 12, 13, and up till now, foreign countries, foreign institutions, funding thugs to create conflict, up till now. This actually, which was, those are, people, those are the people who do not love their homelands. Why they don't love their homeland? I should have put this slide before this one. But I'm glad that's in the, in, in the first slide. First of all, they don't love their homeland because they have another, a different agenda. Number one, for personal gain, what is this for me? What is there for me? Yani, yes, why, why should I come with you? Okay, and self for pride, uh, where are you going to put my photograph? Front, front page? Central page, top, bottom, where are you going to put the logo of my political party? Okay. They want a job. Are you going to give me a director job if the revolution uh, uh, succeeds? Or a minister? Or a prime minister? Or whatever. What, you, what, you, what are you going to give me? Their affiliation is not to the homeland, but to their ethnic groups or to their sect. The only interest in their ethnic group and in their sect, nothing else. Deep hatred, which is there for thousands of years. Something happened in the depths of the history 1,000 years ago. Those people live with the scar and the ugly deep scar, do not forget. And they come and revenge against you. That's what I've seen it. Recently, in certain Arab countries, when people were killing certain people from the same religion, but from different sect. Historical revenge, that's again, again, they never forget the history. They never forget the history and come back to the okay, we are going to revenge for what happened 500 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, 1,000 years ago. To be, very sure, to be very honest, some of those individuals are not 
national citizens. They have come from different countries to reside in your own country and to get citizenship. They don't have your religion, they don't have your culture, they don't have your values, they don't have your citizenship. That's why they are not loyal, they're not affiliated to your country. No loyalty, no affiliation, and they're not keen to keep this country as one piece. That's why those people, which I mentioned them before, I mentioned them here before, those 11 ones, which I mentioned them before, are, don't like their country because of these four or five reasons. Because it's one, two, three, six reasons. Six reasons. You have to teach your children that. Teach your children that. Be careful with the thugs. Be careful with the thugs. The thugs could be amongst whom? Many individual or many categories could make a thug. Number one, could be among the public or the scum. Have no manners. We know them. They are around. This one category. Second category could be among the criminals who have criminal records. And the police forces or authority knows them. Number two. Number two, three could be among the educated, ignorant, profiteering. What do you mean by educated, ignorant, profiteering? Yes, educated, have got a PhD degree, have got master's degree, have got uh, university degree, but they don't know anything about the society. That's so ignorant in the social affair, but they have desire to make profit from such country from such homeland. Personal gain, again, personal gain. This number three. Religious leaders who keep changing the religious opinion. They say something in the morning, something opposite in the afternoon, something contradicting the two of them in the evening. And the following day, a new opinion and so on and so on. As much as they have been told to say what the people who are behind them asking them to say and to do. They are, could be considered, in my own opinion, thugs. Thugs, as mean, I mean, Balatija. Uh, there's leaders who keep changing their religious opinions for personal gains. Dogmatic politicians, demagogue, demagogue politicians, those individual politicians calling themselves politicians who do not care whatsoever about the unity of the community. And we saw them in a coalition in different countries during this period, during the last 10 years. And they united on a false ground. And the end result is what's happening in their own countries nowadays. And most of them left the country now. We call them demagogic politicians. The lying hypocritical media Again, 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 because the media is very powerful. The lying, the, the, the hypocritical media professionals controlled by their employer. Nowadays, most of the media in this area are funded by foreign uh, employer. Businessmen who are only interested in his or her own business go to hell with the others. Whether they buy for you out of, out of date medicine and food, don't care. Don't care, and I've seen it in countries out of date medicine and food. X stock, X stock, X stock. Those people will call them thugs. Also, al Musaqafin, the literati, the writers, the novelists, the artists, and the intellectuals who operate and change the history. Those people change the history because they have the power to write, you know, to write. Those people, if they change the history or operate the history, we consider them thugs as well. Archaeologists who discover uh, uh, national treasures, then sell it, smuggle it, 
for a few thousand dollars, a few thousand pounds. Those also can call them thugs. Call them thugs as well. President or a king or a queen or a sheikh or Amir or minister or prime minister who sell their own land, give up the wealth of their country to foreign power for no reason or for personal gain, sell their borders, their territories, and ignore the water resources and does not invest in human resources. Those people who call them thugs, thugs, thugs. President, King, Prime Ministers, and others who reduce and also reduce civil liberty spaces. People are coming to shrink the civil liberty spaces. You don't want any civil liberty. And they invest all the, the budget of the government into security and military. Sell the land of their homeland to foreigners, waste and sell the national and natural resources to foreigners, destroy the industry and the agricultural wealth, do not invest in human resource development. Those people will call them thugs. Yani balateja or shabbiha. I draw this picture for you, and I was talking to you before the meeting. This picture, you know, this creature in front of you with two noses, one nose colored uh, blue or uh, velvet or purple. Uh, no, no, not uh, purple. The other one is reddish. Two eyes, one is rounded eye like the uh, the frog eye to the right. The other one is long eye. You can see it. Four canine tooth, sharp canine tooth, cutting tooth. And you can see stained by blood here and there. And his or her face is uh, having many scars. It seems that he or she, or this, uh, this creature have been fighting other people. This creature is the thug himself. It's the thug, which could be any one of the people which I mentioned before. And the scars on his face reflects the fight of the honest citizen to try to stop him. But they failed because of actually foreign support and local support from the deep states. The, uh, the, the shapes around him in, 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 in different colors and uh, triangular, uh, rectangular, and uh, square deflects the destruction of all the structures, the buildings of the, of the society because of the fight between him and the citizen. And the black bird on the left, standing on the red nose, is standing there to see who's coming and to warn him of any movement. And the cobra, uh, which is the snake, is frightening anybody to come and attack him. Above all of them, there's four colors reflect the uh, different seasonal climate at the same time. That's why you cannot be able to cultivate one crop, a suitable crop, in the same time. So we talked about who are the thugs, okay? Now we're talking about what do you mean by thug or hooliganism or bullying or thuggery? What's the definition of this, Lol Baltaja? First definition, which is all my definition, as I mentioned before, you have the right to write your own definition. Could be an acquired moral manner, could be a shi akhlaqi, moral manner, not genetic disorder. Don't say that. His father was a thug, there's a gene from his father to him, no. It is, could be acquired moral manner and not genetic disorder and not limited to a certain category of people. 
So it's only for the poor and not the rich. It could be for anyone. Not limited to a certain category of people. Thugs could be from the amongst the rich, educated literati, which are the Muthaqafin. And the partisan, the Wataniyin, loyalist, the Muntamin, could be from amongst the poor, illiterate, honest, and simple citizen. Not because I'm a poor and simple, I'm not loyal. No, I'm loyal, more loyal than the rich and the educated. Don't lock down or despise the poor, the simple citizen, and highly respect the despicable rich scum because of their wealth. No, there's a lot of rich scum, but they cover their bad behavior by the way they look and the money they spend. This is the definition of thuggery as a moral manner. Second definition is a profession, it becomes a profession. And you know that's a profession since we saw a lot of old black and white movies. A profession having policies, philosophies, guidelines, pathways, leadership, coalition, literature, culture, principles, laws, theories, doctrine, message, messages, messengers, belonging, and convention. This is actually a profession by its own. And all this has been made to protect such a profession of thuggery. Also, it's a, a homemade and the global industry. It becomes an industry. Thuggery, al-baltaja, becomes an industry. Supported or sponsored by an institution, by governments, by states, and benefiting them or benefiting from those benefiting from whom this industry from the weak but rich people you go to africa countries african countries very weak but extremely rich extremely rich go to niger go to mali go to chad go to central african republic go to democratic republic of congo go to mozambique extremely rich but weak countries. But the rich countries are stealing the resources and making them weak forever. So we call the people who do that to the poor, uh, to, to, the, to the weak but rich countries, are thugs or thuggery. Commercial industry, it becomes a homemade industry supported by governments and institutions it becomes a commercial industry. Creating thugs. Thugs who can, uh, creating thugs who make thugs controlled markets. The thugs, Baltajaya, build thugs controlled markets who are building factories and the producing commodities needed by the poorest people and making such people, the poorest, heavily depending on the thugs. Heavily depending on the thugs, their factories and their markets. So it becomes a commercial industry. It becomes terrorist, terrorizing industry as well. Supported and sponsored by secretly by global institutions, governments, and states claiming with one hand that they are defending the poor people's right, but with the other hand, they are secretly investing their money in building the thuggery system and sponsoring their thugs to create armed conflicts leading to booming of the arms industry, destroying the infrastructure of the conflicting societies, disbursement, displacement of people, division of the country, then afterwards stealing their national and natural resources. System, 
system system يبقى if I go back to the agit it's a moral manner profession global industry commercial industry terrorist terrorizing industry it's an intellectual industry and cultural industry as well it becomes an intellectual and the cultural industry accusing people of different culture different values different faith of becoming extreme isolationist becoming confrontational radical and terrorist they get all these highly educated people highly cultural people in their opinion and if you have different opinion oh my god he is not one of us so it becomes an intellectual and the cultural industry it becomes also a literary thaqafiyya dramatic it goes to the drama creation of drama what we see on television and media industry controlled by different kinds of arts controlling all different kinds of arts symphonies movies and story writing uh, and others and even this industry of thuggery went to the drama the media the symphony the movie the story writing as well so what you see on television is false as a part of the drama industry. My appeal to you people, stop, or young people, stop accusing poor and needy people of being thugs, but accuse the people in authority who established the thuggery industry, Sanaat al Baltaja, and made some of those thugs and groups. Ah, Ms. Gimot, superstars. We see in central individual as uh, actors, without mentioning the names, superstars. His or her drama is about thugs, foul language, low manner, bad behavior, using knife and axes and yeah, and a chain which was not a part of the culture of the thugs of this country before superstars to conquer the people and stealing their natural resources as for the poor people they are the salt unfortunately 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 because they are poor they become the salt of earth Trampled on, on by the thugs. يعني, As for the poor people, they are the salt of the earth, trampled on by the thugs because they are helpless, having no power, having no support or backers, and they all be forever considered guilty. Because you are poor, you are guilty. Because you are poor, you are criminal. Because you are poor, we suspect you. Because you are poor, get out. This is a part of the philosophy of the thuggery industry. Number six. It is how, what is the solution? What is the solution for us today? First of all, I uh, take the spirit of uh, our uh, late father, Shunuda of Egypt, Pope Shunuda's statement, who said, Egypt is a homeland that lives inside us, not a homeland that we live inside it. Great word by a great leader. So you should live the homeland living inside you 24-7. Thinking about it 24-7. This is point A and the solution. Point B, we have to develop methodologies, different methodologies for building different community systems. 
to build this 12 or 13 organization. Family system, because family is the cornerstone of building any society. Culture and value-based system to identify the character and shape the character of citizens. Education and national awareness system to stop ignorance and fight ignorance and fight corruption. Religious and faith-based uh, 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 faith system to make the people believe in the moral system. Media, drama, and literally all this system we need to create them, to build them, to protect the community, to protect the homeland. Media, drama, and literally independent systems, political, legal, legislative systems, civil liberty protection system, system for building the civil sector and its organization, system for reformulating and rewriting the history, system for creating job opportunities for young people, system to make the state an institution independent of government. So this is very important, number 12. Because nowadays, in certain countries, the government is controlling the state institution. And establishing, last but not least, the principle of community and citizens' ownership. This is very crucial. Who own the country? Not the president, not the king, not the queen, not the prince, not the prime minister, nothing. It is the citizen. It belongs to the citizen. We have to establish this principle that this country belongs to the people, not to the president himself or herself. These are the methodology for building different community systems. <coughs> My last message to you, young people, is if we look at our homeland as I defined it at the very beginning, I defined here at the very beginning, it gives and does not take anything from me. It feeds me and does not fed by me. It quenches my thirst and does not, why she is thirsty. It provides me with shelter and she's not sheltered. It clothes me while she is unclothed. It looks after us while she is tired. It's, she remains awake in this night to serve us as a homeland, and we don't serve her. We try to kill her, and yet she protects us with her life. This is how can I remind you what do I mean for you by what homeland is about? If we love our homeland, first we should seek uh, inner peace within ourselves. Clean the heart, clean the soul for the sake of Allah. This is number one. Number two, learn to respect the opinions of others, even if it comes from our most ruthless opponents. Learn to respect the word respect, the word respect. Number three, we should be all accommodating and inclusive. We should not exclude anybody. Young people, you should not exclude anybody because you are talking about a homeland which have everybody and anybody. Number four, you make her needs, the need of the homeland, your needs. Not your needs, her needs. You make her needs, your needs. And put her needs ahead of any individual needs. If we don't do that, we don't hold her dearly in our hearts. This is a test for us. If we don't do that, young people, she is not in our hearts. We are just acting. Be sure, my beloved brothers and sisters, that our enemies, our enemies are plenty. They are amongst us, in front of us, behind us, besides us. They're all united to do what? 
to divide our homeland and cut in or tear it into many pieces to make it a part of the past. Khalas, there was a country called X, gone with the wind. There was a state called X, gone with the wind. There was a people called X, gone with the wind. And not a pillar of the future of humanity. Those people are amongst us, could be from our own people or people infiltrate our society and the countries and the community or foreign people. Our homeland was the only power that was able to create what? Civilization, renaissance, reawakening. Alone, without any support or any help. And some of our homelands are mentioned in the Holy Quran or in the Holy Books of Allah. Our homeland was the only force that saved, saved what? Saved the civilization or humanity from the barbaric Tatar and Mughal. When they invaded Baghdad and other places and killed everybody. Stopped the Inquisition, which was run by certain institution, a rich institution from the 13th century to 18th centuries, torturing their fellow men and women who disagree with them in their opinion. Till the 18th century, managed to stop them in the 18th century. And for God's sake, let her, our homeland, do it again by helping her to restore her faith in her people. Trust your homeland. Not because she is silent, not because she is made out of, as I mentioned, the components of it, the 10 components, or components, you ignore it, you step on it, and you destroy it, unfortunately. Please trust your homeland, and the more you trust, and the more you give, and the more you consider, and the more you respect, the more she'll give you back of all the wealth of her treasure. I remember the, the, the dialogue between Prophet Joseph السلام, and uh, the ruler of Egypt when he asked when he asked them to bring him from the prison because he was innocent. You know what Yusuf said to the ruler? Make me in charge of the treasure, treasures of earth here in Egypt. This was in the Holy Quran. That means that Yusuf knew that this country is full of treasures. Like other countries are full of treasures as well. Whether it's in Africa, as I mentioned before, whether it's in the Middle East, as I mentioned, and I mentioned, and, and every country, every country has underneath the feet of its people a lot of treasure. And Yusuf said, made me the guardian or the custodian of the safes of the treasure of earth. I thank you very much for being patient with me. I know this was difficult to get through it, but this is what I wrote uh, and reviewed wrote eight years ago. 28th of June 2013, and I reviewed it uh, this week. Uh, I'll see you next week in another episode of What Father, be the 10th episode. But before I leave, I ask you to pray, make a prayer for peace for every part of the world and remember uh, the, the innocent victims uh, of Srebrenica and stop this genocide and massacre happen to anybody, no matter who is he, their background, or who is she and her background. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.